Motion tracking text and graphic assets to your footage is a great way to add a little wow factor to your edits, and it's actually pretty simple to do. Hey, I'm Tom Graham for Envato Tuts Plus, and generally I'd send you over to After Effects to make use of the motion tracker, but admittedly, After Effects can be a little bit of a beast if you're new to it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get very similar motion tracking results to After Effects without leaving Premiere Pro. But don't worry, if you do also want to learn how to motion track in After Effects, I've just put out a little guide for that as well, and you can find that linked in the description below or at the end of this video. All right, enough chit chat, let's open up Premiere Pro and get tracking. So getting started with this effect is really easy. All I've done so far is open up Premiere Pro and I've bought it in the media that I'm going to be working with. I've got this mountain biker clip here, uh, which we'll see, and then I've got a little speedo overlay, which I'm going to track to uh, our mountain biker. So first up, I'm going to create a new sequence from the clip here. I'm gonna right click on our mountain biker clip and go down to uh, new sequence from clip right here. And there you go, now we've got a new sequence from the clip. Uh, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here, so we are working with just our piece of footage. And you can see here, let's play it through, you know, to see what we're working with. We've got this mountain biker moving along pretty quickly, quite a lot of motion, uh, and then we wanna track our little speedo overlay to it. So the way we're gonna do this is quite simple, really. We're going to start by grabbing a text layer and just creating a uh, full stop, really. I'm just gonna do a full stop. You can do anything really, but I think a full stop will work and I'll show you why. So going into our captions and graphics tab over here, just to uh, highlight our full stop here using command A, uh, I'm just gonna increase the size of the full stop here to around the size of our mountain biker's head. And now I'm gonna go back to my editing tab just to get a little bit more screen real estate. Making sure that the graphic is the same length as our mountain biker clip here, I'm going to go back to the start of our timeline. I'm going to select our full stop clip, go up to the effects controls, select our text here, and then I'm just going to grab the anchor point here and move it right into the middle. So basically what motion tracking is doing is it's taking a point uh, in space here and we're going to motion track this guy's head uh, and then tracking that every frame or every sequence of frames throughout and just kind of making sure that we're plotting that positional data all the way through. And then we're taking that positional data and we're copying that over to whatever asset, in this case, this speedo overlay, uh, whatever asset we wanna be tracked along to our footage. So to do that, we're going through to the start. We've got our little anchor point set in the middle uh, like we did just before. And then we're going to go up to our effects here and we're going to search for something called transform. And we're gonna take the transform, which is under distort, and we're gonna put that onto our layer. What we wanna do is we wanna set a keyframe on the position parameter at the very start of our timeline. And again, making sure that we've got our uh, full stop layer selected, we're just going to set a position keyframe. But the first thing we need to do is set where we want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in here probably 400% just so we can all see it nice and clearly. I'm going to position my full stop over our biker's head here. And I'm just going to make sure that it's sort of sitting just roughly back where the edge of his helmet is here. You can see the edge of his helmet just will be behind it just there. And that way we're kind of using that as our anchor point throughout the, uh, the whole thing. So, you know, when we need to move this full stop around, we know kind of exactly where it was on the biker's helmet. So making sure to set a keyframe position here, uh, we've done our first one now with the toggle stopwatch uh, button. So what we can do now is we can go through and change the position parameter uh, with every frame. But I actually think for this use case, it's easy to go every five frames or so. Um, it can get a little bit tedious having to go through and keyframe uh, you know, a position parameter for literally every frame. So to go through uh, five frame increments, you're going to hold shift on your keyboard and hit the right arrow key. And you can see there I've skipped through five frames. So now I'm just going to move uh, our position parameter again over here on the left hand side in the transform properties, making sure it lines up with where we had it before, the helmet uh, just peeking in behind there where the full stop is. Once again, that's created a keyframe. So now we hit shift and the right arrow. And again, we just continue this process the entire way through. Shift, forward arrow, move our position parameters here, shift, forward arrow, and so on and so forth. So I'll just go through and speed up this process now so you don't have to watch every single keyframe uh, and I'll see you in a moment. While that version of me goes through and manually keyframes those position parameters, let this version of me quickly tell you about Envato Elements, which is a simple to use subscription service that includes millions of creative assets like stock footage, video templates, and music. You get unlimited downloads, the licensing is really simple, and the subscription is downright affordable. It's everything the modern content creator could possibly need. 
So what are you waiting for? Check out Envato Elements today by clicking on that little link in the description below. All right, let's get back to the other Tom. So there we go, we've now done all of our position parameters uh, and I'm going to go back to fit here. I'm gonna drag to the start and we'll just play this through and you can see the full stop is now pretty well tracked to the head of our bike rider. Now what you can do as well, if you wanna go through and just make sure that any of those frames, uh, you know, because we were skipping in increments, there might be a couple of frames in between that didn't quite work out. But to be honest, I think this is tracked pretty well uh, doing it this manual way. So how do we get that position data onto the actual overlay that we wanna track in? It's pretty simple. So I'm gonna bring the speedo overlay in and I'll drop it on top here, trim it back to the size of our footage underneath. And you can see that plays through now, uh, just as a standard overlay without any actual motion tracking in it. So to get the motion tracking data, we're clicking on our full stop. We're going up to our transform properties here and just hitting command C to copy that. Now we're going into our speedo overlay, going into our uh, effects controls again, and just clicking down in this area, hitting command V to paste that data. And now let's play it through. You can see that that has tracked exactly to our full stop. Now, obviously we don't want the full stop there, so it's super easy. We just hide that track or disenable it, uh, which you can do by right clicking and going to enable. And you can see that's tracked through now. So obviously now we can go through and change our scale our, and our anchor point, uh, not our position. Make sure if you wanna move this around, we wanna change our anchor point. So let's just move this down so it's a little bit smaller and we'll change our anchor point so it sort of sits within frame here. And we'll see what that looks like throughout the whole piece. So now our little uh, speedo overlay animates on and it goes through that entire process. And now the best thing about using the transform property to do this is uh, you can add some motion blur in the shutter angle here. So I'll just find a piece here uh, where you can see the overlay. And if I move this to 180, uh, which is a common shutter angle, you're gonna get some nice motion blur as you move through. Uh, we can get more motion blur if we want, if we make that a 360 degree shutter angle, you're going to get quite a lot of motion blur. So we'll play that through with the full motion blur now. And I think that's probably a bit too much motion blur. So we'll bring it back to 180 uh, and then we'll play it through. So there we go. That's the manual way of motion tracking objects within Premiere Pro. And it yields some pretty decent results. I think you'll agree. Now, if you are interested in learning how to do this in After Effects, make sure to click through to the guide that I made for that. It should be popping up around me somewhere just now. And while you're at it, if you haven't already subscribed to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel, make sure you do so right now. Okay, until next time, happy tracking.